What's going on guys, Bexy Beck, and today we've got a brand new video on Bitcoin and the stock market because right now we're seeing stocks sink lower and Bitcoin finding itself on the rise actually, which is something completely out of the ordinary. We thought we're seeing correlation between Bitcoin and stocks and now it seems like maybe Bitcoin's going down its own path. But before we jump into that, if you are not subscribed, make your way over that sub button and smash the subscribe button because we're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. But let's jump right into this. I have a chart here that I just kind of threw together real quickly on Photoshop here. Just uh, the orange line is the S&P 500, and then this other green and red line is uh, Bitcoin. So you see the price uh, starts to correlate with it around here. You see the kind of going stagnant and then dropping. Same thing in Bitcoin. You can just kind of see how they're interacting with each other right here. A little bit different. Bitcoin trading sideways. The S&P going up. Ultimately, it came back down and then it went up. Bitcoin had a little bit of a move up and then all the way back down. So this isn't to scale. So seeing how drastically up the S&P is compared to what the Bitcoin price looks like. Uh, and Bitcoin moves. So it's not on the same scale. Uh, this is just the past three months for both of these lines, but it's not on the same scale. So it's going to it's gonna be look different. It's just basically to see correlation between move downs and moves up, not to see how much they moved up or whatever, because that's not going to be shown here. It's just not on the same scale because obviously Bitcoin's price is a lot bigger than what the S&P 500 price is. It's like when you see this massive gap and think like the S&P just drastically outperformed Bitcoin here, it wasn't that drastic. Uh, it was, it had a move up and Bitcoin, you see this move up is probably pretty equal to this move up here. So uh, something just to keep in mind when looking at this, but basically we see falling off of a cliff and Bitcoin, do we reacting positively? We thought maybe Bitcoin's all right. And then it got just slashed here, uh, fell off a cliff with the rest of the market. We see it kind of trading sideways and then a massive spike up while the market moves down. So we see this right here, this move, right here move a little move up back to a drastic move down bitcoin actually moves up and then continues on a little bit of an uptrend not getting cut down like this so looking at this overall thing maybe we're seeing bitcoin come to a point where it can actually not be completely correlated to the stock market because there are different fears there uh even though the interest rate and the feds changing interest rates and tapering will affect bitcoin will have effects on people you know risk tolerance and things and people do view bitcoin as a risk asset still but uh it's just something to keep in mind that you know there are factors that can correlate with both markets that are out of both of the markets controls but Bitcoin right now kind of showing some strength. And even looking at the charts themselves, this is uh, the S&P 500. This is just an index that tracks it. But for the day, it is actually down 1.37%. Uh, and then if you go to Bitcoin, you can look over here. Just a quick overview, Bitcoin is up 0.89%. So the S&P down, Bitcoin actually up. So you know, this is the second day in a row where Bitcoin has actually been up while well, the S&P has been down. Uh, so maybe we're seeing a little bit of a come away where Bitcoin seems like the safer option, not because of its risk tolerance or risk asset, all this different kinds of stuff, or even what the Fed's going to do, but people not necessarily trusting the Fed all too much and not wanting them to be in charge of this monetary issue that causes all these problems to begin with. Uh, that's going super deep into Bitcoin because that's what Bitcoin does is takes a power of money away from just a few select people and just into out in the open. Uh, Bitcoin, you know what's going to happen. You know the block rewards. You know how much Bitcoin is going to come out every single block, you know, every single year, how much gets added. It's not a secret. The Fed operates differently. You don't know what they're going to do with rates. You don't know if they're going to back down. You don't know if they're going to go harder. You don't know what's going to happen. And that's just the two different operating systems that are there. And you can, if you compare Bitcoin, and if you compare Bitcoin to the NASDAQ, so the technology kind of index for the stock market, you have this right here. Blue is the NASDAQ. Orange is Bitcoin. See, pretty much correlating. NASDAQ moves down. Bitcoin moves down. Bitcoin starting to move up and explode up. The NASDAQ still moving down against Bitcoin going up. We see a little bit of a move up here, attempt to, but still Bitcoin severely outpacing it so started the move up well before the nasdaq did continues the move up while the nasdaq tries to move up but just kind of comparing them again to these similar 
kinds of markets. The S&P doesn't stand a chance against Bitcoin. It's not performed well in the past couple of days, a short time period. But uh, and during a time where there's a lot of fear and extreme fear and then global fears of wars and everything. So we see just Bitcoin kind of doing its own thing. And on top of that, an interesting thing is <laughs> that every time you can see uh, the lower that risk asset plunged, the lower the market's expectation of the Fed rate hikes in 2022 went. Funny how that works. It is absolutely hilarious how that works. So this is a predictor. So something in the market predicting what the Fed's going to do. And, and we're seeing that we see the raise in rates, thinking rates are going to go up. And then Bitcoin, a risk on asset by by many, by the majority of people, uh, you know, falling as rates go up. And the NASDAQ, still more risk on technology. These like new tech companies still risk on. You see that move down as well. And then you see them getting plunged, them getting uh, hit so bad that when it bottoms, we see the market start to predict that the federal funds rate isn't going to be as bad as maybe they were thinking before because they think that the Fed is going to look at these assets and the stock market tanking and they cannot go forward and lower these these uh, or increase these interest rates because if they did that, that'll send the market even lower. You go into recession territory. You have major problems that come with that. Uh, and they probably won't let that happen, but they also could let that happen. You know, no one knows. No one knows what's going to happen. So, uh, but looking at these risk on assets and all this stuff, it just seems like they cannot go through with, you know, pushing rates up very high. Maybe they still raise rates and do it a little bit easier. Maybe they come out in their next meeting and say, uh, we're going to wait on rates and the market will like that. So we'll see how it all happens, but it is definitely interesting to see that they uh, might have to consider the market and crashing the market uh, in you know, controlling inflation. And just to wrap this video up with some Bitcoin stats and Bitcoin things going on, if you are looking at the price, panicking, not knowing what, what to do, it's just looking at these on-chain things kind of tells you a different story. Talking about, you know, if you panic, sell, if, if you panic, if you feel like a Bitcoin illiquid supply is going up relentlessly, and you can see that, Orange is the illiquid supply, gray is the price, the price grinding down, but the illiquid supply continuing to grind up, uh, meaning that these are coins that people cannot buy if they want to, or people who have historically not sold their Bitcoin. So if the higher this goes, the less supply there is on the market, the less supply there is. If we get a shift in demand and demand goes up, then there's not enough to go around. Price has to skyrocket or go up with the demand that comes in. And the final one to just kind of look at and just know what everybody should be doing in any portfolio, whether it's stocks, crypto, Bitcoin, anything, is seeing, and this goes to Bitcoin specifically, seeing that there's a hardcore base of Bitcoin hodlers that dollar cost average relentlessly, no matter the direction of the price. So that's what the green line is, just people... So this is people who own less than 10 Bitcoin and the price. So you can see it's just up and to the right pretty steadily over time. No one, it doesn't spike when there's a down move in price. It doesn't drop when there's a spike up in price. It just continues to buy every single time. And that is a winning strategy for any investment dollar cost average into great assets and hold them for long periods of time. You don't have to trade things. Uh, that's actually statistically the easiest way to not make money is by trying to trade in and out of the market. Time in the market always beats timing the market. So just pretty interesting seeing Bitcoin kind of pull away from the stock market, doing its own thing, actually performing in the green for the past few days well, the stock market has actually been in the red for the past few days. So we'll see how that continues if the stock market recovers and Bitcoin continues to outpace it on recovery or if we see Bitcoin reverse and come back down. I don't think we're going to see that, but anything is possible. And we'll have to see what the Fed actually says they're going to do. So only time will tell what happens. But as always, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. We're on the road to 1,000 subscribers. See you guys in my next video.